Okay, well, as, as Glenn said, did I thank you, Glenn? Thank <laughs> I you, don't Glenn. remember, but uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm busy and with the camera everyone, trying to figure it out. Thanks, everyone, for coming. As Glenn said, I'm reading from a new book, and uh, it's a little bit hard. What I've got here is a printout, so it's a little harder than a book, so I may be fumfering around. But I'm going to start out with the first couple of poems in the book. And this one is called High School Physics. Mr. Darby was teaching the Bernoulli effect, which I'm amazed now how few people know. It says that the faster a fluid liquid or gas flows, the lower the pressure its flow. It's how we fly. That curve that bellies an airplane wing pumps air faster across the top than below. Less pressure down from the fast, more up from the slow. Thus Bernoulli brings us liftoff. Darby, solid, stolid, bespectacled, square, sandy-haired, laid this out. Then he asks, why do you think the Bernoulli effect happens? I felt the molecules streaming inside me. A current that I saw flowing as if through a pipe on a blackboard. And it seemed that the faster they were going, the less likely they were to stray sideways and hit the walls of the pipe. So I raised my hand and said this to Darby. Somebody told you that, he said. No, no, Mr. Darby. This is the first time I ever heard about it. Somebody told you, or you read about it somewhere. He said it with a soft, slightly irritated finality, and shut me down inside his wooden head. He took my breath away. But, 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 one of my homunculi has been trapped in that numb skull ever since. <laughs> I'm the survivor of a mental snuff act. <laughs> oh, Hara Flash, why I'm not a physicist. Still, I celebrate Bernoulli, good genie of our flight, and the moment that thought body ran as a current in my chest. In case people don't know, there's a famous and wonderful poem by Frank O'Hara called Why I'm Not a Painter. So, okay, so this is this is a little bit uh, this is a little bit brisker in pace here. It's called Vietnam. I entered the rush in quiet snowfall of the shooting gallery, shooting smack, first time in my life. Went to my Watertown connections on the scene, K.O. and Mario and David Johansson had them do me to get out of the Vietnam War. But not the war. Two million dead, napalm, defoliation had no reality for me. It was just the army, mindless, mind burial. I was tripping the scene fantastic. Women and drugs had my own desperate project to think and write and think skydiving to theorize the lost Godhead. So three days and three nights, 
I shot everything they had up and down, heroin, speed, even shot codeine. I didn't shave, didn't change my underwear. When I went to that physical, I was a burned out house, my arms black and blue, not like the used, oozing tracks of a real junkie. And I was deeply ashamed, tried to dangle my valuables bag in front of the piss stains in my underwear, move with the baboon platoon, pompadours, ducks' asses, the concave and convex, pale, tattooed, skinny, muscle-bound, station to station, and I tried to tough it out, called one of the non-coms man, as with the subtext, let's cut the bullshit and get real, man. <laughs> Saw his eyes waver, thought he almost tittered. The other inductees walled a nervous hollow around me, but behind my sullen front, I didn't know if I was indeed a man or a worm, master or slave. Finally, the psychiatrist, and to my amazement, he seemed genuinely anguished. You don't have to do this. Did he call me son? We can help you. It almost cracked me. I wanted to comfort him. I wanted to say, it's okay, it's okay. I'm only kidding. I'm only skidding. Feel like crying. I'm only dying sliding in and out, in and out of the cuckoo clock, the machine gun breach. They classified me 1Y. That meant they weren't taking me, but they could always call me back. So that hung. Would I get strung? Neither happened. I disliked heroin's flat hum flattening feeling, mad to feel, mad to party, make that starry scene, great upwelling of the 60s, shimmer of Godhead, ganglion fires. They never called me. I thought, wrote, thought, and theorized mana the Tetragrammaton, the great hoodoo, and it was a schoolboy book. But it got taken and published by a major New York house, while out around the world curve, the war brown flesh without me. The te Tetragrammaton is uh, Yahweh, Y-H, Phil can fill in. Just the abbreviation, you're not supposed to say God's name if you're a pious Jew. Okay, so uh, let me find the. This poem is a little bit longer. It's called Mystery Dollar. It was Michelin, this is in memory of the poet Jack Michelin, so mystery doll. It was Michelin who first used that market riff, integrity, down 12, blacks, down 5, poetry, up 15, straight on, gimlet eyed, traveling the bought and sold, whereas I crystal balled those market graphs, tried to power zoom each zigzag, see into ranch homes, 
boardrooms, subways, see heads lit up, glowing in the numbers. I was more involuted, phantasmic, drunk on brain juice, but we were both he and old beat, me post beat, bohemian slackers, devoutly unemployed, looking at high finance through the wrong end of a telescope. Around that time, I discovered dumpster diving, Café Babar days, days when I knew Michelin. I became a tapeworm in America's vast, creamy gut, opulence, obscene waste. Say dumpster, you think pig slop, rancid garbage. But in the late 80s, dumpsters behind supermarkets were filled with food no more than one day tossed an ocean of goodies, packaged steaks and cheeses, fruit, yogurt, vegetables, sometimes even trays of deli. I'd rarely eaten so well. The only thing I feared was less the supermarket people or the cops than that somebody I knew would catch me squirreling in and out of there. Worst, one of my poetry students, middle class, hyper-educated, who saw me as big heart, poetry man, with whom I tried to project, tried to be my ideal self, our faces falling off, black, squirming, never happened. Bustling weekend mornings, nobody came back there, back there but other scroungers. One day though, reaching after some fruits, some packaged dates, I grabbed a hand, high and eerie. The hand felt cold. My mind raced, ringing round and round. A dead body? A sawed-off arm? Was I mistaken, grizzling out? Long, icy moment of indecision, hair standing on end. I reached down again and it moved. It was a street dude sleeping down there. Burn, let me, I'm sorry. Sleeping down there under all the food, pale, sandy-haired, <coughs> almost monocolored. No sound, eyes shut. He heaved and was still again, covered in vegetable bits, it was like something barely born, whose eyes haven't opened yet. Death, baby, in the goody bin, so closed and shut off, so completely fallen, down, 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 off the big board to zero. He left a morbid taste. American waste man, but that didn't stop my diving. Something for nothing. Good food. You never knew what you'd get. Biking my rounds of dumpsters, each one was a potential treat. Treasure bins, tasty bins, like the centers of specialty chocolates, wonton ravioli, almost womb-like in their secret insides. What stopped me was love. A young woman in my poetry workshop and I had been signaling, 
edging towards each other. As soon as the workshop was over, we went out to dinner and spent the night together. Strong, so strong and sweet. I remember something she would do in those first few weeks, walking down a side street. She'd slip ahead of me and under, bend her lithe young back as if to take me piggyback. She'd hook a finger in my lapel, spread the other arm like beating wings, flying us together out over the bay on lust and joy. But the dumpsters disturbed her. No ultimatums. She just felt they were bad for me. And of course, she was right. So I started editing manuscripts for food money, entertainment money. I quit the dumpsters and moved all the way over into cash. <laughs> and as luck would have it, it was all ending then anyway. The supermarkets were moving to compactors, mashing milk and meat and vegetables into hard, disposable bricks so poor people couldn't get at it, so waste men wouldn't die in their garbage, and there would be no lawsuits. For me, though, beyond freebies and greed glow, the dumpsters became a head trip, shamanic, Michelin-esque, like tunneling down into the earth to get to China, as if the bottom were connected to the top, corporate waste wormholing to corporate riches, the connector, the mystery dollar, Anuit Cheptis, he, God, favors our undertaking, Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new order to the ages, that disembodied eye in the pyramid. I've lost track of time, when you know. Um, uh, got two more minutes. Two more minutes, okay. Let me read. I was going to read a longer poem, but I'm going to read a shorter one. There, there's a lot in this book about my mother and her, <coughs> her trip into dementia. But this, this is my mother before that, before that uh, decline, and it's called 